Gathering is a presentation of the Christian Television Network. Uh, hello, Mrs. Cavanaugh. This is Marty. Fine. But, Mrs. Cavanaugh, I'm not going to be mowing your lawn anymore. No, ma'am. I just don't need to work anymore. So, you'll have to find someone else to do your lawn. Bye. Hello, Mr. Washburn? I just wanted to tell you I won't be cleaning your garage this Saturday. Next Saturday? No, no, I don't really need to work anymore. Ever. Thanks anyway. Bye. Wow, what a life. God will supply all my needs. I'll never have to work again. Professor Clodhopper, Papillon, Darcy Wilson, Ron and Marty, Whitler Dan, Sarah Edens, and Deputy Les. Come and join us for a half hour of fun and games at Joy Junction. Now here's Sheriff Don. Thank you, and welcome to Joy Junction. Hey, we got a neat gang here with us today, and we're going to meet a couple of them right now because we're ready to get into our first contest right away quick. So let's have our first two contestants come on right up here, will you please? And we'll give you opportunity to uh, decide on which team you think is going to win today. See how well you can choose. Will it be the red team or the blue team? What is your name? Susie Anderson. And how old are you, Susie? Ten. What grade are you in school? Fifth. And uh, what school is that you go to? Keswick. Good. Susie, what do you want to be when you get out of school? Do you have any idea? No. you got a long way to go. You think you'll attend college? Probably. You think school's important? Sometimes. <laughs> That's what I like, an honest answer. I wonder, too, sometimes. But I know now it really is important to learn all we can. I think the Bible teaches us to really study and learn all we can, too. Do you play any kind of instrument? No. How about uh, pets? Do you have any pets at home? Yeah. What do you yeah. have? Two dogs. Two dogs? Wow, you got a house full, huh? Or do you let them in the house? Yeah. Okay. Let's meet your opponent over here. What is your name? Amy Welch. And how old are you, Amy? Ten. And what grade are you in? Fifth. Do you have any pets at home, too? No. None at all, huh? No. How about brothers and sisters? I got two brothers and one oh, sister. Oh, two pets and three pets at home. <laughs> how old are your brothers? Uh, one's nine and one's six, and my sister's two and a half. So you're the oldest in the family. Yes. Do you boss them around all the time? Yes. You do? Oh, do they pay attention all the time? Yes. They really do? My goodness, what a well manager. Your parents don't have to do anything with you there, do they? <laughs> nope. You take care of the house, you clean and do all the... <laughs> all right. Anyway, we're glad to have you both with us today. We're going to get right in our first contest. Deputy Les, let's get them all set up while we show them what nice awards they'll receive for being on Joy Junction today. Each contestant will receive a beautiful full-color t-shirt to remember their exciting visit to Joy Junction. Today's winners will receive a beautiful Joy Junction watch with the letters PGF to remind them that it is always time to put God first. Back to you, Sheriff Don. All right, you see what Deputy Les is uh, pouring out on the game table there, don't you? That's macaroni. And what we want you girls to do is string the macaroni, and whoever gets the most pieces of macaroni on their line. And boys, you just stand out just a little bit so we can see the macaroni and kind of count it pretty easy. Pull it just a little bit tighter than that. That's good, Todd. All right, when I say go, you start putting on the macaroni and see if you can get the most on there, okay? On your mark, get set, go! Cheer them on, gang. Who's going to win this contest? It's worth 20 points. It's worth 20 points. One... Deputy Les, 
this is just too easy. They're getting them all over there. I mean, we're we going to change that? Okay, what are we going to do? <laughs> oh, some cooked macaroni. From now on, I want you to only use the cooked yuck macaroni. Are you ready? See if you can get any of them on. On your mark, get set, go. Cheer them on, gang. <laughs> One, two, three, four, okay, and the blue team has one, two, three, four, five, and it looks like the blue team wins 20 points. Let's hear it for the blue team. <laughs> and you all can be seated, all right. <laughs> uh, it's, excuse me, Sheriff Don, I hate to interrupt, but I think we've got a problem over here, and maybe you can help out. Uh, tell him what you've learned, Marty. Sheriff Don, I seen the light. That's all. I just seen the light. I was reading in my Bible the other day in the in the book of Philippians, and a verse just jumped out at me. It said, My God shall supply all your needs. So, Sheriff Don, if God's gonna give me everything I want, then I don't have to work again. Ezer! Oh, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. I, I think you've kind of got that little mixed up. Uh, it's true God will supply all of our needs, but there are some conditions that are important. In fact, the, well, the Bible even tells us six days shalt thou labor. We do have to work, you know, Marty. In fact, Marty, the Bible also talks about, it says, look at the birds. You see, they don't sow, nor do they reap, and God will... There, supply. there, you see, you see? Now, we're a lot more important than the birds, Whittler Dan. Well, you're right, Marty, but there's something else to that as well. You see, we've got to be a part of that too. God will supply our needs, but he, you know, those birds, God doesn't drop the bird, the uh, seed in their nest. They have to go out and scratch and dig right. for it. Yeah. And you know, that also reminds me, you, you've read about those people in the Bible like Moses and David and Jesus and uh, Amos and people like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. Well, do you know that they weren't just preachers and teachers, that they were workers too? They weren't? Absolutely. Moses spent 40 years raising sheep. Joseph knew how to raise sheep. So did David before he became a king. Wow, they did a lot of work. Absolutely. Then there was a guy in the, in the Bible, a prophet. We know of him as a prophet, but he raised sheep and he had two jobs. He also was a fig picker. A uh what? -huh. He picked figs. He was oh. like a migrant worker. Then I remember three guys by the name of Peter, James, and John. They were disciples. Oh. And you know what they did before they were disciples? Fishermen? That's right. Do you know that even Jesus, he was only a teacher for three and a half years. You know what Jesus did before he became a teacher? What's that? He built houses. He built ox carts. He learned from his dad how to work. And, you know, I think Jesus had lots of muscles and was nice and strong because he was a carpenter. Wow, he did a lot of work. Then there was also the Apostle Paul, the big, you know, Paul we did wrote a lot of the New Testament. Yeah. He wrote in the book of Acts, he said, Now, I came to you, and he, I didn't sit there and let you give me everything. I worked for part of my living, and he was a tent maker. Did he work for Ringling Brothers? No, I don't think he worked for Ringling Brothers, but he made tents back in those days. Oh. In fact, one of the neatest verses in the Scripture goes back in the Old Testament. King Solomon had a guy that was helping him rebuild the city, and his name was Jeroboam and says that Solomon looked at Jeroboam and he saw how hard he worked and he became the head of all of his workers and all of his laborers. The Bible tells us that we need to be busy, not just sitting there waiting for God to drop everything out of the sky, but we need to be busy as well and God will meet our needs. Yeah, sure will. Sounds like it. I think Sarah's got a song for us right now, a really neat song. Why don't you sing that for us, Sarah? I got 
many things, but his hands refuse to work. And you know, that's why I like to do inventions, because I like to work with my hands and do things and invent yeah. things. Yeah, by the way, I've got one to show you right here. Oh, okay, I'd like to see it. All right. You know, I was working in my shop the other day, and I had this light on, see? And yeah. I says, boy, that, bright, that light sure is bright. I don't need that much light. I says, what can I do to, to turn that light down a little bit, you know? Uh -huh. And I thought of something. Looky here. I said, sometimes I might not need so much light, so I put a, a cover over it. I don't have as much light, see? Oh, it dims it yeah. down, see? All right. Then I've got another one here, and if I want a night light, like in the house, you know, I put this over it, yeah. and that really turns it down. Uh -huh. See? And now, look at that. Look how that turns it down. I discovered a way to not have as much bright light. Turn it down, up and down, like yeah, I want it. But yeah, but Professor, can I ask you a question? Sure. Why don't you just use a lampshade? A what? A lampshade. A lampshade? Yeah, it's this little thing you stick over a light and it's not so bright. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, all you have to do is go to the store and you can get one. Oh, okay. But it was all a good right. idea, though. I'll do that. What do you think about that? Yeah, uh -huh. that's a good, that's all right. Good idea. All right. In fact, Marty, can I uh, show you something over here? Sure. The go professor ahead. has given me an idea to uh, maybe explain your predicament, okay? okay? Can you see from there, Marty? Uh, you know, Many people go through life and they're just uh, like floating around on, like on a raft, you know? And they're waiting for things to happen, you know? Like the guy, uh, the guy's out there, uh, let's say maybe he's uh, shipwrecked, you know? And uh, he don't know where he's gonna be uh, uh, going, so he's, well, he has no choice. He's got to wait for something to happen, you know? They say about life, uh, Either you make things happen or, or you let things happen, which means uh, you have to do something about the situation you're in, you know. He could just drift around forever, you know, just on his lap. But uh, instead of just sitting there, maybe he might take uh, maybe part of uh, something uh, from the wreckage, maybe, and he could put up a sail. Maybe the wind would take him or get into the current, you know. Or uh, better yet, a better way is to... Uh, to read God's word, you know, in Matthew 6:33, it says, uh, "Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you." Right? Now, but if He doesn't do anything here, we'll put that here. That's for you to remember. 6:33. Now, if you let the wind just take you and you're, you're not doing anything about this, you can read God's word all you want, but unless you do what He instructs you to do. There's nothing going to happen. Maybe uh, if you don't have your eyes open, maybe you'll miss out. You may drift right into the land there. There are people uh, ready to help you. You know, there are a lot of people out there that really can't do anything about their lives. So God provides for us to help them. Don't you think you have done? I oh, that's sure good, do, Mr. Pepio. I enjoyed that. Hey, I'm glad you enjoyed that, Marty. And, uh, hey, guys, we're over here working real hard, too, over here trying to answer some of the mail or read some of the mail here. Sarah, here's one from Kathy Fisk in St. Charles, Illinois. And she wrote and sent something really neat in here. She sent kind of like a badge in here. Put God first badge. Isn't that kind of neat? You like that? That's pretty. Put God first. And she wrote in her letter and said, I really enjoyed the mailbox club. I have come closer to God through it. I have a riddle that I would like to share with you. How do you make antifreeze? I don't know. You take away her blanket. Lo I love you all, Kathy Fritz. What have you got in the letter there? It says, Dear Joy Junction, I would like to join your mailbox club, please. I am eight years old. Thank you, Lori Hall. And she sent a joke. Where do cows take their sweethearts? Where do cows take... I have no idea. To the movies. To the movies, <laughs> okay. Here's one from Jeff, uh, Jeff Hedges in Collinsville, Oklahoma. It's a nice long letter. It says, I really like your show. I always watch it every Saturday. I am a Christian, and I go to church every Sunday. I would like to join your mailbox club. I'm only five years old, and my mom wrote my letter for me. He says, would you use one of my jokes on the program? What is gray, has four legs, Big ears, a tail, and a trunk. I don't know. A 
mouse going on vacation. <laughs> that one there. And we've got one more. You got another one there? Yep. Okay. And this one's from... That one looks like Mary Suttle. Mm -hmm. Suttle from uh, Durkee, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Read that letter for us. Okay. Get that open there. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Dear sir, through watching your show, I have learned to put God first. Would you please send me the first lesson of that newsletter type thing? And thank you for teaching me to put God first. You know what she's talking about? She's talking about the mailbox club, and I got one right here. You know, all you've got to do is write and ask for the mailbox club, and we'll send it to you absolutely free. They're kind of like Bible studies with really neat stories inside of them. What you do is you read all the stories all the way through, and then right on the back of them here, you fill it out, and then you fold it up and you put a stamp on it and you send it to us right here at Joy Junction. And we'll grade that and we'll send it back to you. And there's, I guess there's 10 lessons in one of these. And when you finish all 10 lessons, then we'll send you a nice certificate. It's absolutely free. You just need to send us your name and your age and your address. And also when you ask for that mailbox club, also ask for this real neat poster of the whole gang here at Joy Junction and we'll send it to you absolutely free. So get out your pencils and paper and write today for that. Sheriff Don? Thank you, Whitler Dan. It's time for our final contest. The blue team is ahead 40 to nothing right now, but each correct answer you give me will be worth 10 points. So either team can still win. 10 points for each correct answer. If you know the answer, Danny and Susie, just push your button, your light will light up, the buzzer will sound, and you'll have first opportunity to answer the question. Here we go. How many days a week does the Bible say are for working? R.K. Blue Side. Um, six. Six. You are right, and there's ten more points for the blue team. What should we do on the seventh day? Rest. Right, rest. rest, absolutely, and there's ten points for the red team. This one is true or false. Proverbs 13, 14 says, lazy people want much and get little. True or false, Blue Side? True, um, false. No, I'm sorry, that is a true answer. Proverbs 13, 4 in the Living Bible does say, lazy people want much but get little. All right, the next question. What kind of food did God provide for the Israelites as they traveled through the wilderness? Red Side? Manna and fowl. You are right. Yes, God sent quail, birds in the evening, and manna in the morning for them to eat. God provided for them. The score now is 50 for the blue team, 20 for the red team. Here's a harder one. In the story from the Bible that Whitler Dan told, Solomon saw what a hard worker Jeroboam was and did what? What did Solomon do for Jeroboam when he saw what a hard worker he was? All right, the Bible says, and Whitler Dan told us, that he was put in charge of the labor force. He was such a good, hard-working man. All right, I want you to fill in this blank. The Bible says, My God shall supply all your blank according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Blue side. Needs. Needs, absolutely. That's what we're told in the Bible. In the story in 1 Kings about the widow and Elijah, what did the widow have in her barrel and cruise that never emptied? Something she had in her barrel. Do you remember that story? First Kings about the widow and Elijah. She had something in her barrel, and every time she poured some out, it just never ran dry. All right. Okay, do you know Red Side? Oil. Yes, you are right. She had oil, a cruise of oil. She had a barrel of meal. That's 10 more points. All right, but our time is up, and the score is 60 for the blue team, 30 for the red team. Let's hear it for the blue side. <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. So the blue team is the big winner today. But you can be a big winner, too. Actually, we have no losers here because all our contestants will receive the neat T-shirt and we'll get to uh, get the winners. will get the nice watch also, okay? And Deputy Les, what are you doing over there? Looks like so you're... I found another scripture on work. I thought I'd just maybe read it. Well, we, we got a little time. Go ahead. Read it for us. All right. This should be your ambition, to live a quiet life, minding your own business and doing your own work, just as we told you before. As a result, people who are not Christians will trust and respect you, and you will not need to depend on others for enough money to pay your bills. Hey, wait, that's, that's really good. Read that one more time, Deputy. That's a good verse. All right. This should be your ambition, to live a quiet life, minding your own business, and doing your own work, 
just as we told you before. As a result, people who are not Christians will trust and respect you, and you will not need to depend on others for enough money to pay your bills. Oh, that's a good one. I'm glad you brought that up and read it for us, Deputy. That is a good one. You, you, I want to find out if Marty's learned anything today. You're right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Well, well, Marty, while you're thinking, let me give you a couple more verses to think about. In Ecclesiastes 5.12, the Bible tells us that a person who works hard during the day will sleep well at night. Oh, and there's another one. It's 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. And it says we shouldn't even be around Christians who spend their days in laziness and don't follow the uh, ideal of hard work. Well, are you trying to tell me that, that if I do my share, then, then God will need all of my needs? That's right, Marty, but we do have to do our share. Have you ever, for example, taken a look at the ants? The ants, well, they're just dumb little insects. Well, uh, you know, Marty, I think sometimes the ants are smarter than people. What do you mean? Well, Marty, in the book of Proverbs, we read about the ants and how industrious they are. Have you ever seen a lazy ant? Well, no, they're always working. Exactly, Marty, because they know they've got to get their food together because they won't have a chance in the wintertime. Uh-oh, I'd better get to a phone. Quick! A phone? What for? I've got to go call Mrs. Kavanaugh and Mr. Washburn and see if I can get my jobs again. Let's go. <laughs> okay, Marty. <laughs> All right, Marty. I hope you get to a phone real quick and get to call them and get those jobs back. Yes, I believe God does expect us to work. In fact, the Bible does teach that. All of us should have chores, things to do around the home, and things to help others with. Not everything should we expect to get paid for, because the Bible teaches us to give and to help those that are in need, too. You know, I believe God will supply all of our needs when we work, like the Scripture Deputy Les read over there, that God expects us to work so that we can pay our bills and not depend on somebody else to give us everything. And no, God's not going to give us everything when we are capable and able of work, but just sit back like Marty and say, I'm not going to do anything, just let God supply my needs. No, God doesn't expect us to be like that. But God will supply our needs. If we have a condition or a problem where we can't work, then I believe God will supply our needs, and I believe we should help others that are in situations like that. So let's be willing to work. Let's be willing to give and to help others that are in need. When we meet those conditions, as the Bible teaches us, then God will supply all of our needs. might not be everything you want or that I want, but it will be all of our needs supplied. God will take good care of us. There's something else I want you to always remember. Read your Bible, pray every day, and be sure to attend church. Will you do that? And always remember that PGF reminds us to what? Put, Put God, God first. first! Put God first, kids, and we'll see you next week. Put God first.